I feel like I'm in my own version of Karate Kid. Install, uninstall. Basically sums up my journey of Linux so far. So for those of you who thought I was going to go back to Windows after one week, you can kiss my, assuming that you've seen my last video, I have left Windows and the previous year I left Apple and I switched to Linux and more specifically the Linux distribution Fedora 41. Now it's been two weeks and I've learned a lot. And thanks to all of your comments in the previous video, I've learned even more. The first thing I learned is that there are different working environments within a distribution. I thought a distro meant that that would just be one working environment and all of the elements that you see visually would be set as so. But I learned at least with Fedora, there are two different working environments that you can install. By default, I had installed GNOME. Now, GNOME looks like a Mac OS setup, but a little bit more discreet. You have large icons, which you can arrange and set in your dock or pin to the dock, as you say, and you can find those icons, search easily, and it's just a very sleek looking interface. You can also install a work environment called KDE. On my device, I have KDE Plasma, and this looks very similar to a Windows environment. You have a taskbar at the bottom, a start-esque menu, and you can access your applications through that menu directly. And you can also store your items on your desktop. Now, when I first switched to Linux and Fedora specifically, I kind of missed the Windows environment of just putting things on my desktop. When I'm editing, I put my folders on my desktop and I just let stuff accumulate on my desktop while I'm editing a specific video. So when I first switched, I didn't know I could put an alternative working environment and I kind of just stayed with the default GNOME. Therefore, I learned a new workflow, I learned keyboard shortcuts, and I kind of migrated to GNOME quite easily and I liked the environment. I like how my workflow evolved, but once I figured out how to actually install a different work environment, I decided to test it out. KDE for me probably would have worked when I first installed Linux. It would have been an easier transition, but now after using GNOME for almost two weeks, I kind of prefer GNOME. I like the look of it. It feels like a different device. When I go back to the KDE environment, it feels a bit dated. It feels a bit old. Yes, if you're used to a Windows workflow, this will work perfectly for you and it will be probably an easier transition. Now, speaking of workflow and transitioning, I am a content creator, so I do use specific software for different tasks. One of those tasks, of course, is editing, and I use DaVinci Resolve. Now, in the last video I pointed out, I used a step-by-step -step guide, kindly offered by one of my followers, Tyler, and honestly, DaVinci Resolve was working great, or at least I thought it was. Now, this bug appeared in different applications and another issue I had was OBS. This is a streaming software, open source of course, and if any of you tuned into my March 17th stream, you saw it all go up in flames. And what I mean is when I tried the streaming software, it crashed after one minute of streaming and I just couldn't get it to work in my stream and I had to switch to mobile streaming for that specific stream. Luckily, I figured out a solution and it involved uninstalling and reinstalling a different version of OBS. And if you were there for the stream this week, you saw that it was working perfectly fine. Now, getting back to the issue with my editing software being slower, I also noticed another bug appearing when I was watching videos or content in full screen on my second monitor. My screen was flickering and unfortunately, I was trying to screen record this bug, but the screen recording wasn't showing the bug. So I knew something was wrong, probably with my graphics. And as you saw in my last video, I complained about the graphics driver installation of NVIDIA. And honestly, it wasn't a difficult process and I wanna highlight to people thinking about switching. It's not the end all be all, that was just me. It's my first experience switching to Linux myself 
and that was kind of the only rough patch I had in the installation process. Now that I was still having graphics issues, I thought it was a me problem that I installed the drivers incorrectly. I went through different tutorials, I asked for help in my Discord for those of you who have been following me closely, and people tried to reach out and offer different solutions. None of those solutions were working, so I had to troubleshoot a little bit further. And with Linux, I'm finding out there's a lot of investigating, a lot of trial and error, and thanks to a lot of you who told me to back up everything just in case I break it, because whoo, I've been installing, breaking things, and really trying to keep things going as clean as possible. Now getting back to my graphics issue, I decided to troubleshoot some different options. Again, I tried some tutorials that didn't work. I ended up deactivating some things that made things worse and having to go back in my steps. I also thought maybe it's a hardware issue. Um, maybe my HDMI cable that I connect to my computer was going bad. I switched those out, didn't improve anything. And in that process of checking my hardware, I decided to check my computer further and I found out that I actually have two graphics cards. I have an integrated graphics, an Intel integrated graphics to be specific, and a dedicated GPU, which is NVIDIA. Now, this was kind of the key that made other people who were helping me be able to go deeper. And thank you again to Tyler in my community and a channel supporter for deciding to check which one was activated and if we could really focus on which graphics card could be used over another one. Now, I know they can be used in Fusion and that's how it's designed, but I was more than happy to deactivate the integrated one and use my dedicated graphics card because yes, that was the problem indeed. I was using the integrated graphics and it was pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, my editing software was slower, exporting things was slower, again, putting things in full screen, it just couldn't handle the demand. And once we figured out a solution, we went into the BIOS menu, which I had no idea what that meant. I literally had to look that up, how to access it, all of that goodness, and then find the setting in BIOS for the GPU and switch the setting to discrete and this automatically switched to my GPU NVIDIA instead of my integrated graphics, solving all of my graphics issues. And honestly, I felt super powerful again, but I wouldn't have been able to do it without the community. And what I've been noticing with Linux, people are super helpful and have probably been in your situation at one point or another. There are tons of forums, there is tons of good advice, bad advice, and you kind of just have to do a lot of trial and error. So like I said in the beginning, it's very much like Karate Kid. Installing, uninstalling, installing, uninstalling, hoping it doesn't break. If it breaks, make sure that you have that backup and you can restore everything. And speaking of installing and uninstalling, there are different ways you can install software or apps onto your Linux distribution. Now there is an app store or a software application where you can search and install kind of like you would on Mac OS or even the Windows store. It's very user friendly. You can search, find the app you want to install and it's super straightforward and easy. You can even choose the different methods of installing. Now the more fun way to install is definitely the terminal. As somebody who's worked with terminals here and there in my jobs previously, it's kind of a scary place at first and can feel intimidating, but it's so much more fun. I feel like I'm in one of those movies where they show a hacker doing things on their computer. This is the same kind of feeling I get when I install something on my terminal. I feel like, wow, I really know what I'm doing. When I see all the text going in, saying yes to install, and you see tons of lines going through, you feel so powerful. You feel like, yeah, I know what I'm doing, and then it breaks. And then, <laughs> then you probably have to find out why it broke, why it failed, and you get a lot more information in the terminal. You can see which aspects maybe didn't work, why it didn't work, and it gives you more clues when you're looking up things in the community, you can look up the specific error you might have received and you get more information. When you're using the app store and installing, sometimes it just failed and you don't know why. It just doesn't work. 
or the version that you install doesn't work and you have to uninstall and try a different version. A lot of trial and error. And I found that the terminal is just a better place for installing to get that additional information you need when you need help specifically. I highly recommend just trying it out, installing different things. And this is how I solved my problem with the streaming software OBS. When I had installed OBS, I had used the general app store offered on Fedora, installed it, and apparently that version wasn't really compatible with um, Fedora 41 in the way that I wanted to use it. It wasn't connecting to YouTube successfully. I went in and found some comments in different Linux communities recommending that I install a different variant or a different method, and I used Flatpak instead and I installed it via the terminal this time and everything worked flawlessly. Everything was working smoothly and if you tuned into my stream this week on YouTube, you saw that it worked. So again, a lot of trial and error, a lot of different methods on how to install things, but it feels like there's always a solution. If you're somebody who likes to solve problems and likes to troubleshoot, Linux is definitely for you. And if you're somebody who doesn't like doing that, there are so many people who've already done it for you. YouTube is an excellent resource, so don't feel like you can't do it. Coming from somebody who's never used Linux before, if I can figure it out, so can you. Now that's the gist of what I've learned, what I've gone through the past couple weeks. And if you are to ask me today, do I regret switching to Linux from Windows? Absolutely not. I have no desire to go back to Windows or Mac OS for that matter. And I really enjoy Linux. I like the customization options. I like the opportunity to use open source applications. And I just like the freedom. I like being in control of my computer. I've really enjoyed learning more about my computer. I mean, I didn't know I had two graphics cards, for example. And I feel like it's something that is exciting to learn about. I feel like there's so many opportunities within the Linux community, trying different distros, for example. And it's something that made me excited to use my computer again. As somebody who's kind of left the computer for more boring tasks, such as administration and being a content creator, I just use it for editing. Now I find myself going to my computer over my phone. So from a digital minimalist perspective, I found that I've moved tasks onto my computer that I've previously reserved for my phone and I'm really enjoying using my computer again and finding that there's so many things that are possible with Linux that I didn't even think about before. Now, if you have any more suggestions or any more advice or feel free to correct me, of course, if I've been wrong in my interpretation of different things regarding Linux, leave some comments down below. Let's get the conversation started. And I'm really hoping that some of you who are debating to switch from Mac OS or Windows to Linux, take the dive, highly recommend. And again, thank you all so much for watching and see you soon.